Hi everybody, I am Shrija Ghosh, studying in Cambridge School, Class 7. Now today I have made a light detecting lamp. So what this is going to do is detect the light intensity and accordingly make the LED switch on and off. So now, let's take a practical situation. In your house, there is a power cut. There is no light source around you. But don't worry. This little device is going to switch in automatically. Because the LDR sensor is going to see that there is less light. And that's why it is going to command the two LEDs to switch in automatically. But now, think if the power is back. What's going to happen to these? Well, it is going to switch off. Because the LDR is going to know that there is enough light intensity around so for now i can give my two leds some rest that is how this little device works and it is very useful in practical situations now let's connect our motherboard to our application and check the working let's have a quick look at the working of my little light detecting lamp now this is my app and as you can see there is just one button and one label. So there is no other button to operate the little LEDs. So it switches on and switches off automatically according to the LDR. So now we are going to assume that there is a power cut by switching off the tube light. Now this little device is meant to help us during such situations when there is no light source around us. This little device is going to switch on and light the way. So now let's uh, switch off the tube light. Do you see that? The LEDs switch on automatically. Now, if I switch off, uh, sorry, if I switch on the tube light again, assuming that my power is back, you see the LEDs turn off. This is how this helps you in times like power cut. Now, let's see how to build your light detecting lamp. So now I'm going to explain the components which I've used to make this. Obviously you need your motherboard. Then you need one LDR sensor to measure the light intensity. Then you need two LEDs. I've used two and connected them using 45 degree blocks and a P connector. Then you need the cables. Last but not the least you need the qubits. So let's get going this is the stand for the Q brake our motherboard here this is the stand for the two LEDs and this is the stand for the LDR well it looks all mixed up and messed up and you don't know where which one should go where but now we are going to connect everything to each other first the LDR stand and the motherboard stand gets connected like this as you can see here there are I blocks so that it touches the ground and stands firmly and properly here I am going to place my LDR and LDR stand and the motherboard are connected. Now for our LEDs. I'm going to connect it over here. Again, I've used the eye blocks for the stand. Now the two LEDs. I'll place them here. Hmm. This looks too short. Why not increase the height? So now I am going to use my T connector and one connector to increase the height. 
if you want it to be even more taller you can directly use a five hole pillar or more t connectors voila now this looks taller this is how your light detecting lamp looks like now for the cables you need to grab three cables one for the ldr and two more for the two leds now which cable should we use should we use this kind of cables or this kind of cables hmm well keep these cables aside you need to use these kind of cables the head and the tail both are whitish in color these are used for the motors and the motor swappers these are for the sensors and the actuators like buzzer leds rgbs ultrasonic sensor etc whereas these are for the dc motors then the motor swapper sorry the motor splitter now i will take the cables put these back in the bag now let's connect them okay, it goes in over here wait for the click sound and that's when you understand that it is connected there you go i heard a click sound going to connect this to my port one to connect this to my port 4 wait for the click sound and then going to connect this to my port 4 again the click sound is the indication there and the cable for the ldr and the port 5 there you go now you can arrange the cables in a proper way so that it doesn't come in the way of the ldr or the leds to make it look more tidy but for now i'm going to keep it like this So this is how once again this is how your light detecting lamp looks like we have built it on the outside and now let's coat it in the inside let's go quickly and open our stem desi that is our app inventor and see how to design and coat it I'm showing you how to coat our light detection lamp so firstly Log in to Code to Play and click on Start New Project and give the name as Light Detection Lamp. Once it appears under the name, click on it and you'll get redirected to this page. Well, I've already added the three main or rather the basic components which are used for all the robotics project. So the list picker, notifier, and Bluetooth client. You'll get the list picker and the notifier from the user interface, and the Bluetooth client from the connectivity. So I will now rename the list picker to connect. I'll rename this here also. Done. Now, 
as we have added uh, three basic components, we need to move to the other components which has to be used in a light detection lamp. They are obviously the LEDs which are going to emit the light and the LDR sensor which is going to detect the light intensity in the surroundings. So let us go to the QTPI mega blocks. Okay, and now we'll drag and drop the LDR sensor and two LEDs. Just click OK. Bluetooth client and which port number would you want? I'll give it as one and this I'll give Bluetooth client and port number as two. This Bluetooth client and I'll give the port number as three. Oh no, I'll give it as four. Remember the port numbers and accordingly we need to attach the cables also. Now, I, uh, what you can do is also add an RGB in the middle so that it can either give a red color, red, uh, a blue or a green just to make it look better. You can do that. Uh, now, we need a label which you will find in the user interface. Drag and drop the fifth element, that's the label. What this is going to do is display the light intensity in the surroundings. So I'll give it as light intensity. Oops. Yeah. I'll just copy this. Over here. Yeah. Now I am going to align my screen to the center. We are done with the designer's interface. Now we are going to move on to the blocks interface. Yeah. So we have been redirected to the blocks interface. I am going to drag and drop this and this. These two blocks are used everywhere and that is the reason I had added it in the bag so that I don't always have to drag and drop each and every block from the block section. So if you want to know how to add a block in the bag, it's very easy. Just select the block which you want, which you want to be added in the bag, drag and place it in front. You can see that the back changes and there will be a sound also. Okay, so now we will do the rest that is using the LDR sensor. So, whenever the LDR sensor is on change, that means whenever the light intensity keeps moving because it's not always going to be stable uh, by the LDR sensor. As you already saw in the working, it was moving between 600 to 650. So, whenever it's on change, what I need to do is I need to set the light intensity label, the text of it of course, so you can change that over here, text, to the, uh, to call LDR and read, sorry, call LDR sensor and read LDR. So this means that it is going to call the LDR sensor and it is going to ask it to read the light and intensity. So we are done a bit. And now we are going to deal with the LEDs. If you noticed, only when there is a lot of light, that is when our LEDs stay off. But when there is very little light intensity, that is when there is a power cut, that's, that's the example and practical problem which we took 
while I showed you the working, that then will be very less light. So that is when the LD LEDs has to switch on. So that is the reason we need an if then else block. Only if the LDR sensor, let's drag and drop the math block. This is really useful while comparing two values. So if whatever the LDR reads is less than, um, let's give it as 40, because 40 is really less, because when the light is switched on, it is at 500, 600. So obviously when it is switched off, it will hardly be 40. So let's give it as 40 and whenever uh, whenever the LDR reads that the light intensity is less than 40, that is when it needs to call the two LEDs. needs to call the two LEDs and switch it on. Now, else, that is, if it is more than 40, it needs to do the complete opposite, that is, switch off the two LEDs, as simple as that. So let's just duplicate it and set the true to false. True means switch on and false means switch off. Well, we are done with the blocks interface also. This is a very simple coding, but it solves a very big problem. So if you use your brain, think of a problem and try finding a solution to it, you can do wonders. So with this, I would say that I am done with the coding. Now, what is the next step? We have to build it. So there are two options. I choose always the first option. Now, when you choose the first option, you need to grab your Android device. Make sure that MIT AI2 Companion is installed. If not, go to Google, uh, Google Play Store, install the app. After you open it, make sure to click on scan QR code. There will be two buttons. In MIT AI2 Companion. So the first button is going to be connect with code and the second button is going to be scan QR code. You, if you're choosing the first option over here then then you need to click on scan QR code. A barcode scanner appears. Scan the QR code which is present here. Download it. Install it connected with your motherboard and then you can see the working of it. You can also place it somewhere near your, uh, maybe on your table and whenever there's a power cut, your parents, your siblings, everybody can see how useful your device is. Thank you.